two, one. <laughs> Josh, I, I seriously can't believe it just because this is episode 67 of the Have We Made It Yet podcast. If this is your first time listening, or it literally might be the 67th plus one time, this is again the podcast where two creatives and their guests. I know I say this a lot, but I'm really excited for our next guest, which I think you will be too, Josh. Talk about the process of making it. As always, my name's Lucas Ng, the actor portion of this podcast, and I'm joined by my co-host, Josh Young, uh, the comedian portion of the podcast. I got to adapt and change to that pronunciation because I feel like that's what I should do moving forward. I'm Josh Young, not Josh Yang. <clears throat> Let's see if we can make that change uh, in the culture. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm the comedian portion of the podcast and we're you know, we like talking about our process of making it because we just started a out a couple years ago. Yes, sir. And, uh, yeah, things are looking excited. But Lucas, I feel like you were, I think in our order, you you had the you had the baton, didn't you? That is true. That is true. So mm -hmm. in our in our three by one, because it's a three person race right now, Mister Josh Young, have you made it yet? I have not made it yet. No. And if anything, <clears throat> I do have an update for the previous audition, the voiceover audition thing I had with a, a streaming service or, or whatever. Uh, but I did get a response back. They liked uh, some of the tapes that I sent, but uh, they wanted to keep in contact for future roles. So it was a pretty good, you know, uh, letdown for in, in all the circumstances, yeah. which I felt perfectly fine with. Um, but yeah, you know, that's just that's what happens sometimes. Things, uh, you know opportunities come and then you take advantage do your best you can and uh, if they work out great if they don't work out you know just keep your head forward focused and uh move on to the next one so uh yeah you know it's all part of the process i'm not i'm not too uh hung up about it because i think through this podcast through our experiences talking with guests as well you know keeping your expectations in check and uh just making sure you're you're level headed with these types of uh, maybe ups and downs and opportunities. So <clears throat> haven't made it yet, but uh, still was happy for the opportunity. Looking forward to what moves on moving forward. But hey, Lucas, have you made it yet? No, but I will also counter to that point too. Josh, you got a call back for your first audition ever with the international streaming service. Like mm. we, when you come back in town, we're celebrating either way. Cause either way, that's either incredible. Way incredible um no i have not made it yet uh but the whole thing is i am learning about a different facet of the film industry right now you know in acting we are at the production side so we are like in the middle but right now i am doing a job in the post-production side which is all the way on the opposite end of the of the uh, film industry there it's incredibly interesting at the same time because so many shows require visual effects so these artists are extremely talented people and uh, I can't wait to watch their work on the big screen because they deserve all the props. So, you know what? Uh, not too much on the acting front right now. Auditions haven't really been that much, but at the same time I'm learning and that's all you can really do, not just as an actor, but also just a human being, right, Josh? Just a human being. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, the, the reason why we might be like talking a bit faster for this episode is just because we have such an important and incredible guest on. Josh, are you ready? I'm ready. Hit me. Okay. So for our next guest here, there are just some people you meet in life that you know they're set for bigger things. Um, her and I first met at university where we worked on projects together and became friends. I also remember meeting her twin brother and we chatted about her favorite shows, Suits being one of them. All of this was before I knew of her pageantry aspirations. I'm saying all this because it's the ones who quietly do the work, press on and diligently create their path with intention that are the true success stories. We lost a touch a bit in late 2011 and 2012, but then I heard whispers that our next guest here was preparing to run in the Miss Hong Kong pageant. Long story short, because we're gonna get into it with a bit more detail tonight, she won the 2013 Miss Hong Kong pageant. And with all that, her meteoric rise has seen her grace magazine covers, 
billboards, starring in TV shows. And even with all that newfound fame, she still finds time to give back to the community with her philanthropic work in an organization called Love Express. Her captivating, magnetic, positive energy just draws you in. And it's amazing now that she gets to share that opportunity in such a public way there. I'm so happy to reconnect with her. She's an amazingly talented model, actress, spokesperson, etc. She does it all. Her name is Grace Chan. Hello. Is this where I make the big reveal? You did it. There it is. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for that introduction. Oh my gosh. That was <laughs> a little bit embarrassing for me. <laughs> Nothing but the best for Grace there. Um, I... As we start off with every episode though, Grace, have you made it yet? So I was listening to how you guys answered this question and um, I think in terms of how you guys answered it, it sounded very recent, like, which is, which is something I, I really like that approach. Like I feel recent as in like, maybe there was a project that you were looking forward to or a role that you were trying to go for. And that's what you focused on rather than have you made it 10 years, 20 years down the road, a huge achievement that we don't know will or will not happen because I mean, with these two years of COVID, we didn't even know that this was going to happen. Right. Yeah. I feel like that's really important as a reminder for myself and for others to take it one day at a time. So if you ask me, have I made it? I feel like at this moment, um, I've made it in terms of, I feel like I'm at a good place in being one of the things that you didn't say was I'm a mother as well. <laughs> um, I mean, there's so much to learn, obviously, in this role, but um, I feel like at least right now, I have a lot of time that I've put into their lives and to nurture them. And I'm really happy I made that choice because doing so, I also had to give up a lot of my career mm. and mm. work less in that aspect, but it's a happy choice. So in that sense, maybe almost there. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. Awesome. So it, it, so in some sense, you do still feel like fulfilled in that way that you've made your path and you are still progressing on it in your own terms though. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to learn in that aspect and also with work. I mean, I'm not to say that I won't, you know, go back and start acting again or hosting or doing things like that. But at the moment, I feel like I'm content um, despite everything around the world that's happening. I feel like at least right now I have that and I have my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I did want to throw this question to Josh, who's going to eventually ask it, but, uh, but we had read that, um, you had one of your first like like star being real incredibly starstruck at one point. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, like re read on a, an article that one of your first starstruck moments was Shawn Michaels, the WWE oh! wrestler. <laughs> and it was like it was so it was funny. a really yeah it was a real fun fact that we saw because it was like you know back in, when you were in Vancouver went down to Portland with a friend to see a WWE event and it, in high school I think. <laughs> And it was like, wow, it's like, was that something that like, how did that even get started? Because it apparently you were obsessed with like, oh WWE. my gosh, you guys have done your research. So not a lot of people know that side. But um, yeah, so I basically had my best friend in high school, we're still actually very close. Um, she brought me into the world of WWE. It was WWE by then. And it was WWF before that. Right. Um, and I mean, before that, like, I mean, probably the virgin that Lucas met is a very, you know, quiet, shy. I kind of reverted back to that when I went into uni because I was like, okay, I need to be more subtle now. Um, and it was really fun because I think we all know wrestling is more entertainment than it is real. But I almost kind of appreciated that because it was the acrobatics, the, the physicalness, but also the acting portion that came mm -hmm. together. So instead of being, you know, one of those skeptics who goes, oh, my God, why would you watch that? It's fake. I would say, well, why would you watch that? It's a performance, right? That's why we go into movies and theaters and watch TV because it's a performance, right? So um, I really enjoyed that to the point where we paid for pay-per-view subscriptions every month to see, you know, <laughs> the shows. <laughs> we had subscri monthly subscriptions to the magazines. 
Um, we had a list of 101 things every WWE fan should do before they die. We had to post it on our locker. Like we were intense and we knew every single song that came out like when the the wrestler comes out as well so we would have this game where we would each have one side of our our ipods or headphones um and then we would play the song and whoever could name that wrestler first would win oh my god (laughs) wow that's next level that's that's even better than i would have uh, i would have imagined your answer to be um (laughs) But actually, the more you think about it, I think there is quite a, a decent connection between like wrestling and the pageantry of like wrestling, because it's all like very big characters, like, you know, very outlandish personalities. And it's I, I can kind of see some of that being the same element of you know showmanship and pageantry and like beauty pageants. Did you was there like some kind of connection there that all was also motivating? It's like, oh, I, I think that's a fun thing to do. I think when I was younger, um, I was very soft spoken and I, I feel like sort of like Lucas, a lot of people remembered my brother more than they would remember me. Like I was always, my brother's name is Derek. So they would say, oh, that's Derek's sister. And it wasn't that I minded or, you know, being in the shadows. Like I love my brother dearly. Um, but then almost like a side of me that wanted to be like, oh, I want to be more confident. You know, I want to be more like him. I want to step up and show people like, you know, I'm not just this studious little bee, you know, kind of thing. So um, I always had it in my mind that if I was brave enough one day to step on to this pageantry and try it. And um Every summer, I always returned to Hong Kong to see my grandparents. And then when mm-hmm. I did, it was during the summer that they would have the pageant. So then when that was on TV, it was kind of like, you know, harness inside. And I was like, oh, one day, one day. Wow. And then, um, yeah. So when I graduated, I just thought there's nothing to lose. You know, I have this degree. I can always go back, fall back on it and do something there. Or I could try this and see where it takes me. Mm-hmm. So that, That's a great segue just to my next question there. Like, of course... The whole point of the pageantry is that it's it's a full commitment that you really do have to invest yourself heavily into it. Can you take us through that thought process of 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 first even thinking about doing it, but also just committing to it and and the path that you have to take to get yourself mentally there? Okay, it's so funny I'm talking about this to like two men, but okay. <laughs> yeah. In case you guys ever think about it. Um, so, I mean, first of all, it's a beauty pageant. So it's, I mean, you know, your parents and everything is, it matters. I mean, it's a superficial world we live in. Um, and I remember when I was still in university, my mom had known someone who had been in the pageant before and we met. And the first thing that she said to me then, oh no, sorry, I was in high school. Yeah. Mm. The first thing she said to me was, oh, if you want to be in a pageant, you better get braces. (laughs) And I was like, because, yeah, my, my teeth were, you know, they were, they were, um, they had character, I would just say. It was <laughs> not exactly straight. Um, but then it really just, you know, it was like reality hit. It was like, you know, you have to be pretty. If you're not pretty, you're not going to, you know, even have a standard chance for them to get to know your personality. Um, so I got braces in uni. I'm not sure when we met if I still had them, but the first year of uni, I had braces. And I couldn't say my name properly because I had a lisp. So my name has like an S sound, right? Like Grace. So I couldn't say that. So I was Grace for like the longest time. (laughs) Yeah, but um, I mean, the price you pay, right? Everyone's like, okay, that's nothing. But so that was kind of how it began. And then eventually being in the pageant taught me a lot about um, your self-worth because you are constantly critiqued on, you know, media platforms, um, that was when social media was rising, you know, in 2013. So, you know, Facebook, Instagram, people would comment, you would put a photo and they would judge you. And I think I really, really did not expect so much judgment to come. And um, what I didn't like the most was that my family was also put on this, um, put on this Mm -hmm. pedestal as well. So they started, you know, commenting on how we looked, how I didn't look like my parents. Maybe I was adopted. Maybe my mom had an affair with someone like it was, quite ridiculous you know and very hurtful so knowing that I was like if I continue being on going on in this industry that's just going to keep propelling and propelling and Mm -hmm. is this something that I can you know withstand but Mm -hmm. luckily my parents are very very they're very encouraging and supportive Mm -hmm. I know that's like 
quite an easy word to just throw out there, but they really are. You know, they said, we don't mind that they say these things because we know the truth. And um, if you stand back now, it will just make them feel like they've won or that, you know, they said something that was true when it in fact is not. So um, yeah, now it's been eight, nine years into this industry. (laughs) So yeah, I would say that they really helped me to continue on this journey. And I mean, in between, there's so many ups and downs and it's such a small city, you know, so um, a lot of things feel very compact and pressure adds and it's very it's a very stressful environment that we live in here Mm -hmm. but yeah Yeah, like like it's a great segue also just because uh, I was reading an article from the CBC and uh, one of the persons that asked you was what's one of the perks from winning the uh, Miss Hong Kong pageant there and your first answer actually your only answer was seeing how proud your parents were and I found that to be like quite a quite revealing just because you know when you think of perks you think of like oh you know maybe like a cash prize or maybe like Mm -hmm. an acting role but you said making your parents proud um yeah that's just so revealing just because seeing your your mom and and dad being happy is that something that's so incredibly important to you yeah sorry i get emotional but um Mm -hmm. I think it's important because like as a mom now, it's like if you have done something right in raising them, like that's what your kids would want, right? They would want to make you proud. And um, I mean, they're just incredible parents. I'm so lucky. Like, do you you find that like the older you are, you realize the world isn't as, obviously like the world isn't as simple and you realize like, oh, people get divorced and, you know, people have bad marriages that they want to get out of and people get hurt. And, Mm -hmm. and then you realize that, you know, in some way that you're, even if your parents say they fought when you were younger, they would try to kind of hide that from you or they were trying to protect you because they really just want you to be happy. Yeah. And I mean, my parents were over and beyond, like they, they did everything in order to give us a very comfortable you know, happy and also very down to earth life, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I feel like a lot of people think, you know, when we're growing up in Vancouver, like, oh, that's such a posh city. And you probably, you know, had everything handed to you, but it's not, you know, we were very grounded when I was 15. I think that was a legal age back then I started working and my parents were like, Mm -hmm. yeah, you should work because we ain't going to give you any money, you know? So (laughs) I really appreciated that because now I know how to raise my kids, you know, it's, Mm -hmm. it shouldn't just be, you know, here's your allowance and, you know, go and do whatever you want with it. It should be hard earned and that should build character, you know? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, that also sounds like you were very well prepared as well for kind of like the hardships of the limelight and the social media and like all these people making these judgments who, who have no idea about you or your family, but they're just going off of what is surface, you know, value information. And I think that is also something that when you like all creatives trying to make it, that's not necessarily something you consider is the impact upon your family by putting yourself out there. Like you might do controversial things and that might reverberate throughout your family. So it is, it is encouraging to see that like you have that support uh, network and group to help, help uh, push you to where you are now. Um, Like in that sense as well, you know, given that the industry is very uncertain sometimes, you're working on some hosting duties here, some other projects, some shows here. How have you found like right now in terms of managing your own family, like raising your own family, the the difference in the scheduling and and having to find that balance? Yeah, I mean, like you said, I feel like we all understand that the industry that we've chosen is a very passive one. You know, people, you know, assign you work. Otherwise, you're kind of just sitting waiting. I mean, you can be more proactive, but if the opportunity isn't yours, you just kind of have to, you know, wait and be patient. And it sometimes makes me think like, what if I just went and, you know, held a very stable job, an office job, you know, I have those coworkers, I can see them. Day. Like, that's a very happy kind of scenario also in my mind. But I mean, people always think the grass is greener on the other side, right? So that's, that's also true. And, um, you know, I think with right now balancing my family, I've had the very, you know, a a very opportunistic thing come up, which is social media. So, I mean, being at home and being able to take care of my family, but being able to kind of almost promote myself 
through that mm-hmm. kind of um, channel and also kind of how I reconnected with Lucas as well. Like if it weren't for that, maybe we wouldn't have been able to, you know, connect and talk. So um, mm-hmm. I think that's great, but it's also not a very eternal thing for me because I feel like that could be taken away, you know. Remember that one day a couple of weeks back when Instagram started, stopped working? Oh, yeah. Instagram. And everyone was like, is it just me? And I started calling people and I was like, <laughs> if it's not working and WhatsApp not working, I'm dead. Like, I'm dead to this society. <laughs> and that rose a lot of fear in me. I don't know if it did to you guys, but where do we go from here? Do we start mm. another platform? Should I start YouTube? Because that's unrelated. Should I start Twitter? Like, it's not even popular in Hong Kong, but so what? Let's try something. Like, then you realize how much of your career relies on this one outlet. I know. That's scary. <laughs> and yeah, then that. I was, yeah. And then I was like, okay, I better, you know, go and get some hosting jobs because at least that's like, <laughs> that's still very like, you know, you need to be in person, you need to be there. But um, there's a lot of fear there, and um, it's hard. I think it just it just goes up and down. I can't say, you know, that everything's perfect and everything's great, but um, <laughs> there's great moments. So just gotta Absolutely. hang on to those too. Yeah, like, it's funny that you talk about Instagram also, just because, like, I, I see your DIY cooking shows on your Instagram account. I see your book reviews. I see even, like, your dinner talks gone wrong kind of stuff there, too. And everything. Oh, wow. Like, we pour ourselves into the research. This is a really uh, research-oriented podcast I here. <laughs> I um, Yeah, like, you say this is a really passive industry. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, it really does seem like you are continually pushing your own content out at the same time, too, there. Um, is that intentional or do you just kind of feel like you have something to share? So you want to share? Yeah. I mean, all the things that you just mentioned are definitely just my personal. And I think a very Canadian side of me (laughs) is, um, you know, baking. It's like people don't bake here. You just go and, you know, grab a good meal or there's a lot of cafe hopping here, I must say. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I understand because Hong Kong is like, I mean, where we live is a very small, like, like an apartment, uh, as opposed to kind of how we grew up. Cause you know, <laughs> that wasn't, um, that was something that I had to like get used to. So we have small kitchens, we have small ovens. I don't have like a big, um, big oven anymore. So I bake when I can. Um, and I think it just goes to show people that like, Oh, you know, she has hobbies. I remember when I was younger and I didn't really have any hobbies and I didn't do sports and people would ask me and I would have to make something up just to sound like I was so busy all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so lame. The things we do at, like when we're young, trying to convince people, <laughs> but now I do like, I love reading. Um, I always read when the kids go to sleep and um, yeah. And I bake and I, I enjoy seeing my friends, but yeah, I'm glad I can share that. And I do see people like, you know, Oh, thank you so much for your book review. I just went out and got this book as well. And oh. Yeah, like that's very like encouraging to me. Like I, don't, I didn't start it for that purpose, but I mean, it's nice to know that people actually enjoy them as well. Mm-hmm. And and almost to wrap it up here, just because we know we have to wrap this up pretty soon there. <laughs> I, I did want to ask this one question, although it's not planned on our on our question page right here. But I did want to okay. ask, um, what would the Grace, the five-year-old Grace say about you right now if they can see where you are at this moment? <laughs> five years old was actually when I went to Canada <laughs> oh, wow. so I mean then it was like my mom was so she was like everyone's you know going to Canada I'm gonna go too and then she just packed everything up in a week and we left with her <laughs> um I guess the five-year-old would say wow your Chinese has gotten so much better <laughs> <laughs> That's I awesome. left and then it was just all English from there. And then coming back, it was so difficult to read scripts. Can you imagine? Just like, it was, oh. I don't know. This is like hieroglyphics. I can't read this. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. And I think she would be proud that, you know, she stepped out of that shell and, you know, you really just tried and hopefully is, you know, impacting people in the right ways. You know, I don't need people to remember like, oh, Grace Chan was this, you know, amazing blah, blah, blah. But, you know, just impacting like, oh, I remember I once read somewhere, you know, someone saying that they, you know, put more time on their, you know, in their family life and their kids and that was okay. And then, you know, just something like a reminders like that mm-hmm. for people. Love it. 
Grace, we could literally talk for hours, but thank you so much for coming on and so good to reconnect again. No, thank you. I'm sorry I did so much talking. I kind of wanted no, to know more no. about your podcast as well. <laughs> I'll ask you on another. <laughs> Wicked. Uh, Josh, do you want to go into word association from here? Yes, let's end off our great episode of the podcast by playing our uh, word association game with our guests. So for our, any new listeners, uh, we always play a like kind of a palate cleanser word association game just to get to know our uh, guests on a subconscious level uh, and play this game where I have 10 words, Lucas has 10 words, and then we'll go through our list of 10 words. And Grace, in a Zen state, cleared mind, will just say the first thing, first word, image, you know, thought that comes to mind. Uh, from our prompting words. So, Grace, are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, get ready because I'm going to go first, then Lucas will finish us off with his 10 words. So, <clears throat> Grace, clear your mind. Think of nothing until I say the word. Uh, that's the game. Okay, so your first word is childhood. Dreams. Second word, banana. Split. <laughs> Next word, sun. Rays. Solitude. Peace. Goal. Nothing. I want to say gold, gold, no. Gold, silver. River. Flowing. Circle. Of life. Oh my God, I've been watching too much Lion King lately. <laughs> <laughs> Is it with the kids? Is it with the kids? A lot of Lion King? Yeah. That's the mom <laughs> life. <laughs> All right. Next word. Kumquat. Orange. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Winning. Losing. And finally, finished. End. I don't know. I just think of synonyms. What's up with that? <laughs> a, a very direct mind. Very direct mind. One leading quickly to the other. Okay, great. Great job, Lucas. You got your 10 words. All right. You ready, Grace? Yeah. Sweet. First word of 10. Durian. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> Vancouver. Bridge. I always think of the Lionsgate Bridge. Oh, shout out Lionsgate. Nice. Home. Family. And now this is a three-parter. SFU. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, triple O's. Um, <laughs> ah. Triple O's. That's so funny. Tim Hortons. I'm just thinking of food now, right? <laughs> and professors, I guess. Nice. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. That summarizes my uni life right there. <laughs> food, food and professors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Next one. Communications. Determination. Hmm. Aspirations. Miss Hong Kong, let's say. There we are. There we are. Fame. Fleeting. Oh, that's a good one. Dessert. My favorite. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Reading. Me time. Nice. And the last word, grace. Hmm. Blessing. Hey, there we oh, are. Give it up for that's Grace. A good one. Okay. Phew. <laughs> Winner. I, I, I believe you won. You won the game. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Awesome. Um, where can people find you? What are your social media handles? G H L Chan. It's actually Grace Hoyland Chan. Grace Chan was definitely out. And like a hundred variations of Grace Chan were out too. So I was like, you know what? It's going to be the initials. <laughs> wicked, wicked, wicked. Um, anything you want to promote? Any new projects coming up or anything? 
No, I'm just happy to be here. Don't need to promote anything. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Awesome. Josh, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Josh Yang Comedy across all social media. And of course, you know, if you get tired at night, you could always listen to the Sleep with Josh podcast. It's the podcast where I read uh, genuinely dry, boring material to help you go to sleep in my monotone voice. So you could listen what? to that on the Sleep with Josh podcast. Yes. And uh, Lucas, what are your handles? Uh, you know what? I'm like everybody else only on Instagram right now. So I'm at Lucas John King. NG, just two letters in that last name there, NG. And if you like what you see and hear, you can find us on YouTube and wherever you follow for your podcast, be it Spotify, Apple, or Google Play, or wherever. You can find us at HWMIY Podcast. And yeah, that about wraps it up. Just give it up for Grace one more time. This is incredible. Thank you so much. Thanks, awesome. guys. <laughs> we'll see Thank you. you all in two weeks' time. See you all later. Bye.